Uh, good evening, short story writers. This is part two of uh, my journey as a writer. And because that journey took place in what was um, one of the stages of the evolution of the internet, things were better than they had been, but nowhere near as good as they are now. So, the old model pre-internet was that you wrote something, you popped it in an envelope and you sent it to a magazine or a publisher that would consider it. They had stated that they were open for submissions and that that meant that um, if they had not asked you directly, if it was unsolicited, then it would go in something called the slush pile. And they had these poor little readers who spent most of their waking hours, including on their commute, going through the slush pile of things, articles, stories that they had not asked for, uh, but had stated that they would be open to consider. And they were looking for excuses to eliminate them. So you had to conform exactly to any guidelines that the magazine had stated they wanted. And that meant that you might have a short story that you had written. And if you wanted to submit it to... Oh, uh, the, <laughs> I'll go into a little quirk of that in a moment. But if you wanted to submit it to, say, three or four different magazines, and they all had different guidelines, and they did, one inch margins, two inches from the top, one inch from the top, uh, capitalization of the title, followed by centered by, then your name, two spaces underneath. Some places wanted two spaces after a full stop, some places only wanted one, and you had to make sure that your manuscript conformed to these things because the slush pile was so big, the people reading them were so overworked that they were looking for any excuse to get rid of your manuscript. And if they found that you had not conformed to their strict guidelines, that was it, zoom, zoom, in the bin with it, and you wouldn't even get a reply. You would just be waiting there. Or you might possibly... If there was some interest in it and you had conformed to everything but it didn't quite match the kind of story that they, they printed, then they might write a little note at the bottom saying, why? And that was actually a form of encouragement. It was a rejection, but it was a form of encouragement saying, do this with this story, send it back, and, and we will uh, give it more priority. However... They couldn't actually write all that stuff, so it would be just like you know, um, problem not big enough or um, protagonist does not solve the problem through her own efforts. So that was that. Uh, secondly, the other thing was that you were not encouraged to send stories to more than one magazine at a time for the very good reason they wanted the exclusive on it and if they if, if they offered it was a bit like going to a, a dance a beauty pageant where all, all, all the uh, you had no partner so it was a case of going up and asking somebody to dance with you and let's assume equal opportunity here so the people who are sitting around the room waiting for people to come to them to ask them to dance were in a higher status and the people you the writer were the people going up and supplicating saying can I have this dance please and most of the time they would say no yeah, as in you're not popular enough you're not dressed the right way uh, I don't like the color of your bow tie your hair's wrong um, your shoes haven't been polished enough that was what it was like. So you could only go to one person and then wait for your manuscript to come back. And, you know, you might have a good story. You might have a terrible story. But the fact was it took months, not weeks, but months for your story to go out and come back. Then the Internet came along. Some magazines resisted online submissions 
Weirdly enough, one of these was Asimov's magazine. It resisted online submissions for 10 years. You would think a magazine dedicated to positing science fiction scenarios would have adapted new technology rather more quickly than something like, I don't know, I'm going to pick one out of the air, beekeeping magazine. There were, there were plenty of online magazines who went, wow, the internet, yeah, this is going to be a lot better for us. We haven't got to send things out uh, in, in, in um, the post and, and pay people to do this. There was, of course, the, the, the whole postage thing. You had to include a um, self-addressed envelope if you wanted your story back. Otherwise, it would just get put in the bin and you would not get any kind of uh, rejection slip. You just had to assume that it had died a death. The internet made all that different. But the, in, the magazines and publishing houses, they just dragged and dragged and dragged and dragged along. And they were called and are called gatekeepers, which is after a, um, um, a theme in um, storytelling. There's always a gatekeeper uh, in, in, in most stories who tries to dissuade the protagonist from passing through the gate into the extraordinary world where the conflict is you know, got to be fought. So, and that was, they saw that as their job. The internet made all that different. Now, I'm giving you that, and I'm going to stop now because we've done six and a half minutes, but um, that was stage two of my journey, a horrible word, but, you know, um, my writing career, um, such as it was, that is something that you had to get over all the rejection because most of the time stories sent out that way would be rejected and come back, not even with a, an explanation as to why, just like we're not looking for anything at this time. Well, you know, they hadn't said that on and but they didn't want to discourage people just in case the next Ernest Hemingway just happened to send them something. So they were keeping their options open as the people waiting to be asked to dance. However, they reserved the right to just say no blanketly. Blanketly? I don't think that word exists. Um, on a blanket basis to everybody. Okay, so next, tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the effect of the internet and how the internet is the reason that I got started. Okay, and um, on that note, good evening. And keep writing and... Like, subscribe, all that other stuff. Okay, good night.